We are so excited about you being here. Uh, the kids are so excited. I tell you, there's a lot of energy, and it's just fantastic. And uh, just know that they're going to bless our hearts tonight as they just uh, share their testimony and their relationship with Jesus. So I'm going out of the way, and because I think Mary's doing the announcements. Good evening. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to give you all the weekly schedule announcements. Um, on Wednesdays, there will be a men's Bible studies at 5.30 p.m. Um, EBC Kids is at 6 p.m. And the youth will be at 6 p.m. also. Um, choir practice is always at 7.30. We would love to have people come and join us for choir. Always need some more singers. Um, first place for health class is at 5.30 p.m. on Thursdays. And men's open gyms is at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Friday, there is an exercise class at 6.30 a.m. I know everybody loves to get their exercise in. <laughs> um, upcoming events, um, March 3rd, the youth have an event. We are leaving at 10 a.m. to go to Superfly Air Trampoline Park. So that's all I have. Some of the songs the kids wanted to do tonight are from Resurrection. So we are going to let videos help us do that, but we want you to stand up and sing with us.
this is the part that's a little more difficult, but you'll understand it. Our Father who art in heaven, my Lord, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. youth ministry. Our verse is going off of 1 Timothy 4.12. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in faith, speech, conduct, love, and purity. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day and allowing us to come safely together and worship you. I ask that all of us gain something from tonight's service and consider the testimonies presented. We hope this service shows the passion our youth group has for you. And I ask you lead us to embody all that you are. In your name I pray, amen. 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 I'm going to let you be seated. One of the things I, I didn't realize, they can't see the words back there because they're not back there. Whenever we show videos, that's why they're turned. They're not being rude, I promise. They're just trying to make sure they know the words. These are songs that they learned at Resurrection, uh, and they, I mean, for certain ones of them to be singing them at home and their parents to tell me they're singing them at home means a lot, because um, they don't sing much or sing many. So um, there's one young man that sings that last song at home, has been singing it for weeks, so uh, I won't name who he is, but he's probably the tallest one in the youth group. And uh, <laughs> so... Um, but I appreciate them singing. Uh, the next song is called Mountaintop. It's the same style thing. It's, this is, the group's called City Harmonic. They're from Canada. They're from Canada. So uh, they, they did a great job at worship. So I, I just want you to uh, sing with us. Listen to the song. It says, we've been to the mountaintop. That's what I, you know, I hope we can all say. Christ has taken us all to the mountaintop. Sing it with me. The valley low, that's where we make our homes. But this I know, that's where he saved us from. Cause we've seen the glory of our King on the mountain top.
worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker psalms 95 verse 6 i love you lord and i lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I opened up my mouth and pant for I long longing for thy commandments my lips shall let her praise my tongues will speak thy word let my soul live to praise thee thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path and a light unto my path. Hello, my name is Trace Calvert, also Thad Ronald Calvert III. Uh, my favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is why I'm up here without Christ helping me. I would not have been able to do this. Uh, I grew up in a Christian uh, home with a Christian family. Um, my mom is Tammy Calvert. My dad is uh, Thad Calvert. Um, we have switched uh, our houses three times now, and right now I live uh, in Bledsoe County. Um, my family has given me a, has influenced me uh, greatly. Uh, my mom and my dad always seem to have a peace around them, even in our hardest times, and uh, my grandparents always seem to have a happy, uh, always seem to be happy, no matter what. Um, uh, so I wanted to know what they had that I didn't. And uh, so in 2008, I went to my mom and asked how I can uh, receive the Lord into my heart. And uh, after that, I have been a, uh, and I have tried to be the best Christian I can. Um, my family has helped me, uh, it's like, helped me steer clear from the bad choices, like uh, stay, help, me, help me stay away from drugs and the wrong kind of people to hang out with. Um, say, being saved really changed me. It uh, helped me make better choices it, uh, without my family's influence. Uh, when they're not around, it helped me make better choices. Uh, it gave me patience with some of the people in my life. Um, 
Jesus really, really worked in my life after that. Uh, he allowed me to be a better influence and friend to some of my, uh, to some of the kids at my school. Um, he blessed me with a very, very great family and a very nice house. Um, I started taking Jesus seriously about two years ago. Uh, I was, uh, before then, I was living my life uh, the way I was before I got saved. There wasn't really that much of change. So two years ago, I started praying and uh, reading my Bible a whole lot more. Um, uh, this church has helped me greatly. Uh, a few people in this church, uh, namely Miss Pam Copper, Miss Mary Reed, they helped me a bunch. They gave me most of my general knowledge about the Bible since they were my uh, Udenville Baptist kids' teachers. Um, they, uh, this church in general, uh, everybody that I know has helped me through my walk in Christ. Um, uh, this January, when we were up at Resurrection, I was uh, called into the ministry. Um, I feel like I want to be a youth pastor, but I'm not very sure yet. But I really, I really want. Uh, I'm praying for that God will give me the patience to uh, help me, and his, that His plan will work out for me. Thank you. y'all stand up and sing with me. We're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed my chains are gone, I've been set free. If you're as ransom me, his mercy reigns unending love, amazing grace. As promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and His mercy reigns unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine
I wanted to say this before he sits down, but it's my understanding he's only been playing about a year. Is that right? Okay. This is a lot of dedication. He's come a long way, even since I've been here. So just keep praying for Jonathan as he learns to play more. Okay. <laughs> This next thing is a little bit different, but I want you to listen to it. So, um, I don't know how many of you watched the movie Pitch Perfect, but there's a song on it called Cups. And I found a really cool Christian version of it the other day, and I thought I'd try it. My Savior is Jesus Christ, the Lord. He gets me through every day. And when times get tough, I'll call on to him. He is my refuge and my strength. He is the way. He is the way. Hey. He is the one and only way. Hey. He has changed the way I walk and he has changed the way I talk. Oh, he is the one and only way. My Savior Christ, solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking stand. He's got love that's never failing. My God is so forgiving. Oh, he loves me just the way I am. He is the way. He is the way. He is the one and only way. Hey, he has changed the way I walk and he has changed the way I talk. Oh, he is the one and only way. Anna has done so many different things since I've been here. <laughs> Plays on the ukulele. I was like, really? Um, we have a lot of talent in our youth group. Next up tonight, this young man, I had never heard put two words together uh, until we were at resurrection. And I asked for somebody to pray, and he started praying. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> and uh, so I want you to listen as Nate comes up and gives his testimony. Hey, my name is Nate. Um, my full name is Nathaniel Scott Walls. And a big part of my testimony is when I was eight years old, I had nephrotic syndrome. And if you don't know what that is, it's kidney failure. So my mom was a single mother and she had a soccer job and we moved into income-based housing. And it was pretty tough. We had to go to the hospital a lot to get my blood taken. They had to test me. And finally they figured out what it was and it was nephrotic syndrome. And after that, I went to Banner, Vanderbilt for about six or seven months. And they finally told me that I was in remission, and I was really happy. And that played a big part in who I am today. And I got saved last May. And all of you played a big part of that. I saw what a great church family you were, and I wanted to become part of that. But especially my stepfather, LaQuentin Armstrong, he was a very great role model, and he led the way for me. And he made it a lot easier just to be a true Christian. And I'd like to thank him for that. And I'd also like to thank my mom 
who brought me through tough times, even when she's gone through tough times. And she always had a positive attitude for most of the time. <laughs> and um, she stayed with me in the hospital, a few nights I stayed in the hospital. Her and my father were divorced for a few years. They've been divorced since I was two. So when I was eight, they've been divorced six years. And my dad never made it down to the hospital, but she was always there for me. And I'd just like to let her know how much I love her for that. And I started getting serious when I got saved, because before that, I was just like the world. I could care less what I said, disrespectful to the teachers, and when we were living in Columbia, Tennessee, I had already got suspended a few times and wasn't so great with the teachers. But now that I'm here, you guys have been a great, great family and loving to our family. I'd just like to thank you for all that. And you guys played a big part in me being saved. And that's it. I'm going to steal Nate's thunder just a little bit. Nate's also one of the three young men that were called into the ministry in January. So he, he didn't say that, but he's told his dad that. His, uh, his dad that. He's told Q that. And uh, so y'all pray for Nate and for Trace and Baylor Lockhart. Okay? Daniel. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, when I was asked to do this, I started thinking, well, I didn't really start thinking when I was asked to do it. <laughs> I started thinking like yesterday. <laughs> this was done at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I started thinking that I'm 18, I'm a senior now, so I'll probably be leaving the valley soon. Uh, I've been looking at Moody Bible Institute, which is in Chicago, nine hours away. So I started thinking about what all I've learned from this church from all the time that I've been here. Um, and uh, I'd say one of the biggest influences on my Christian life besides my parents would have been David Stevens, uh, which is what I would call my youth pastor. Um, I learned a lot from him. Um, but tonight I was going to talk about uh, one of the big lessons I've learned while being at this church. Um, and it's not from David Stevens either. Uh, I think the lesson that I'm going to talk about, I've learned from uh, David Cox, the new guy. <laughs> uh, after David left, I, I'd kind of become inactive in youth group. Uh, I mean, I, I came, but I really wasn't doing much. I didn't feel like uh, we had the group. I'm sorry I did not like like the group committee thing, running the youth. I, lo I love everybody that's, that was running the group, but I didn't like the group committee running the youth. So sorry, guys. Sorry, Tammy. I love you. <laughs> uh, so... I was just kind of coasting through, like my spiritual life was just kind of coasting. It wasn't really growing, wasn't falling. It was, I was lukewarm. Um, until David came and I was still coasting when he, when he first come. I, I kind of resented him because I really liked David Stevens and I didn't want him to leave. Um, he, he had done a lot for me and I'd gotten really close to his family. So I really liked him. Didn't want, didn't think it was fair that he left. Uh, I now understand, you know, that he he had to leave. That was God's plan for him and everything. Uh, but I was I was getting ready to leave the youth group because I, I felt, you know, like I'm I'm 18, I can I can leave, yeah. Um, but 
Uh, so I was getting ready to leave, and David David saw that I you know I really didn't have much interest in the youth group anymore. So he kind of he he asked to talk to me. So we sat down and talked for a while. Uh, I lost my place. <laughs> Uh, so we sat down and talked, and he asked me, you know, to stay and be an example to the younger kids that had, that were coming into youth. Um, as Christians, you know, I mean, that's what we're supposed to be is examples. Uh, so I prayed about it, and I, God kind of told me to stay in youth group. Uh, so I've stayed there, and I've gotten more active, and I really feel that my spiritual life is growing again that I'm in the right spot, that God wants me to be there. Um, so in all, the lesson is to be active and to go where God puts you. I was wanting to leave, not because God, it was ready for, or uh, it was time for me to leave the youth group, but I was wanting to leave just out of self, selfish reasons. Um, and, you know, either way, you're probably going to wind up where God wants you. Easy, easy way or hard way. Uh, uh, so, I mean, in all, to be active, like, uh, one second, bear with me. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, in all, Listen to where God wants you to apply your skills uh, to grow your spiritual life. Um, being part of the church body is more than just sitting in a pew. It's more than just listening to someone talk. It's actually going and applying the skills that God has given you. And I figure if I'm going to say something like that, I probably need to back it up with some scripture. <laughs> so 1 Corinthians 12, or 4. Four, right? No. <laughs> For, First Corinthians twelve. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, twelve through twenty says, "For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free." We have all been made to drink from one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. It is therefore that not of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. It is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smell? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he is pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. So just sitting there, not really being active, is a lot like saying, I'm an eye, so what I really have to do, I'm not a hand, I... I don't have a job, you know. You, you do, and you need to be active. God just doesn't want you working over in this ministry. He wants you over here in this ministry. We've all got different abilities, and we've all got different places to be. That's all. Scary when Daniel gets up. <laughs> Wasn't sure where he was going. Um, I'm excited about our youth group. I, I don't sound excited. I understand that. But I really am excited. If I could scream, I would. But I can't. Um, I'm excited about the talent that they have, the abilities that they have, uh, the desire to, uh, sorry, I, marked, I didn't mark my spot. Um, the, uh, just everything about them. I mean, you watch them and, and uh, you see them and you got athletes and you got musicians and you got nerds and you got 
You know, I, I was a nerd. I, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's, uh, we have so many different kids, so many different personalities, so many different home lives. Uh, we have everything from uh, kids living with guardians to kids living with mom and dad. Uh, does that make sense to you? I mean, we have kids that don't live with their, any of their parents. There's a young man right now that's been on my heart for a couple of weeks. He lives, he lives with a, another family member because his father decided to get married and his stepmother doesn't, doesn't want their, his kids. So he took his kids and gave them to another family member. I don't get that, but that's, that's what we have here. I mean, Daniel's the pastor's son. He's supposed to be perfect. <laughs> okay? That's what everybody thinks. Um, I mean, you got Skylar and uh, Spencer, who are Jennifer's kids, you know, and then... That's not bad. I don't mean that. <laughs> single mom. Single mom. And I forgot... What's Sadie? Sophie. Sophie, I can't... Okay, you got all these different kids, though. I mean, we got blessed kids, and we got kids that they've been coming here since nine months before they were born. I mean, the Davenports have been here for ever. I don't know how long they've been here. Um, you know? <laughs> um, longer than most. So, I mean, you got three generations of, at least three generations of Davenports. Uh, three generations. Larry Miller, is, have y'all got three generations? Three, I mean, that's a lot of generations in one church. And we have kids that have been raised in church and kids that have just been coming a short time. And God tells us to do the same thing for each one of them. I do my best not to treat anyone different. You know, might I get along better with one? Sure. And might one not like me? Sure. You know, and that's okay. I, and I'm fine with that, you know. I'm big and I'm ugly. I don't care. You know, I do care, but it, if they don't like me, that's okay. As long as they hear the word of God. That's what's important to me. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young, being an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. I talked to the kids about this Wednesday night just for a little bit. Um, when, I, when, when I first went in the youth ministry, I had a kid look at me and go, well, they're supposed to respect me. That's what that verse says. They have to respect me, even if I'm young. I said, did you read that verse? Did you really read that verse? Did you read the scriptures around it? That verse was written by Paul to Timothy. Timothy was a young pastor. And Paul was referring to what had happened in Ephesus where young Christians were allowing uh, what Brother Brian was talking about this morning, every wayward philosopher to come along and influence how they thought about the Bible. Um, you know, I think Beth Moore studies are great, and I think uh, Swindoll studies are great. I think all those things are great. But guys, when we stop looking at the Bible and start looking at the studies, we got a problem. And so... With our young people, that's one thing I want them to understand. Always go back to your Bible. God says to, to not let them look down, but that's not, what he's, that's not exactly what he's saying, not that way. What he's saying is in the way that you live your life, be that example so they don't have anything to look down on. Now, I know we, I was a teenager. I made a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of mistakes. Um, I did, and I, I knew <clears throat> I was that Perfect kid. Uh, that's what my church family thought. I showed up. I was dressed up. I was ready to go. Sang in the choir. Sang solos. I did everything that I was supposed to do. Combed my hair just right before I got the fro. And, um, you know, I did everything that, that a Christian's supposed to do. But then when I was by myself or with certain groups of friends, I was doing other things. And I was, thought I was hiding it. My mom always seemed to know what I was doing. And uh, it's a mama thing. But um, 
the, the, people thought, hey, David's the perfect kid. Live like David. And the kids were going, yeah, right. You know, I wasn't horrible, but I was not what I said I was at church. And that's the one thing I've tried to get across the whole time I've been here is your character and your integrity. Character is who you are when nobody's looking and what you stand for. Your integrity is what you can be trusted with. All that stuff that you say, you know. And I, I tell them, do not allow your character, do not allow your integrity to be torn apart. That's what that verse is talking about. Paul is saying to Timothy, don't do anything to hurt your witness. And that's hard in today's world. You know, I, when I first went in the youth ministry, I said, guys, it was the same when I was growing up. You know, we had the temptations, and we did. But this is the difference. They've now got the temptation being blasted at them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in fast-forward motion. You know, I, I use a... Hello, uh, what's the name of the show? I love Lucy. Lucille Ball. I love Lucy. That show typically was shot in one room. The 30 minutes was in one room, maybe two. You, you watch TV today, and they don't spend 15 seconds in one room. And the, and the constantly, the commercials, I was, we were watching a... Today, Tucker was laying on the couch because he's sick. He was laying on the couch watching a cartoon. And we're sitting there watching, and all of a sudden there's a... In the cartoon, there's a character in bed in their underclothes trying to entice another character to get in bed with them on a kid's cartoon. And I'm, I'm like, excuse me? He couldn't hear me. I was like, you know, I had to get it turned off. But stop and think about it. They are in, inundated with it. It is in everything that we watch today. Even G-rated G -rated movies today have cuss words that would never have been in whenever I was a kid. So they are inundated with it. And that's what I try to tell them. You need to guard your mind. The Bible says to guard your heart. Um, so that uh, you, you won't sin against God, to make sure that your first love is your first love. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God first. And that's, that's the motto that I try to teach, God first, God always. If I love my wife before I love my God, my wife has become my God. I love my wife. For them, I love my mom or my dad or whoever's raising me. I love my God first. It's got to be first. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to talk much longer. Just it, It's hurting to talk. But the thing I want, you, I want them to get, I want you to get, is to be pure in how you live and to be pure in how you speak and to be pure in uh, who you are. It takes commitment. It is a commitment that you make. It's not something that you slide into or fall into. I tried sliding into Christianity. I've been going to church since nine months before I was born. My dad would, if the doors were open, we were at church, and sometimes he opened the doors so we had to go to church. I mean, it was just that way. That was my dad. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Monday night. We were at church all the time. And uh, going to church didn't make me a Christian. Going to church doesn't make me a better person. It just means I went to church. I got dressed up and went. It's until I make it something in my life. And I make that commitment to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just like um, Trey said a few minutes ago. He said, until I... Made until I got serious two years ago, until I got serious about reading my Bible and studying God's Word and praying, until I got serious about it, it, it didn't really change me. And my life story is, is long, and I could, there's a lot of things happen, but I didn't get serious with God. Um, I ran from God till I was 24, from 16 to 24. Um, and that's a long story. My dad hurt me. And a lot of things happened. And, um, and I ran from God, and God finally got my attention. He said, David, 
this is the last time I'm going to call you. You do what I tell you to do, or I'm going to take everything away. When I was 24, I was worth, I don't know, $2.5 million um, back in the 80s. And uh, I don't say that to brag. I just, I had a good job, and I made a lot of money and invested money. And uh, God called me away from doing what I was doing to go back to school. I went from making lots of money to making no money. Um, and my first job as a minister, I made $5,000 a year. That was it back in the 80s. So, you know, and, and I say it all, does, do I look like I've missed many meals? God took care of me. Now, I'm not worth $2.5 million. Um, I'm probably worth more dead right now than anything. But, you know, it's just... God made me, and he said, this is what I want, and this is what I'm trying to get across to our young people. Seek God's will. Put his will first, and everything else will fall into place. I had a girlfriend for five years, thought that's who I was going to marry. We didn't get married. I met my wife by accident when I was on vacation at my family reunion. Okay, She played the bass guitar in a gospel group that came and played at our, ba- our family reunion. That's how where I met my wife. And, um, you know, God had other plans. She's been the best thing ever for me. She, she helped me grow up. Um, she helped me mature. She's taking care of me. God said, David, when you give me your all, I got so much more for you. And stop and think about that. Don't let anybody have a reason to look down on you. And on your testimony. Live what you say you are. And I I tell the kids this. When I moved here, um, somebody out in the community found out um, where I was at. They said, oh, this this group of kids goes there. I said, yeah. They said, it's a good group of kids. They have family. They know the family. These kids, people at school watch you. People at work watch you to see how you react. I'll, I'll tell you one. I was a sheet metal mechanic. I worked on airplanes, uh, on C-130s. And when I was running from God, there was a point where I was running hard. I was, I would, I, I, they wrote a new dictionary of cuss words that I made up. Uh, it was that bad. I, I was doing anything I could to not go where God wanted me to go. And um, a girl that I was training, she did something, and I said something, and she looked at me and said, I thought you were a Christian. I was like, <laughs> what do you say to that? I have a friend that saw me drink when I was younger, and he asked me the question. He said, you're a Christian? I said, yeah. He said, you do the same thing I do. Why should I want to be one? That friend died and never got saved. And I have to think about that, and I have to answer for that. I've asked God to forgive me, and I've tried ever since then to live in a way that people look and go, there's something different about you. I'm not perfect. I will never be perfect. I'm just perfectly forgiven. Teenagers, live your life in such a way that nobody can look down on you. I'm going to ask Brian if he'll come close. Um, Well, let's go ahead and stand and um, and just teenager. We just appreciate you guys so much. And as we close tonight, um, just come down and hug these people, the teenagers next. Just tell how much you appreciate them, their testimonies, and the songs that they've done for us because this has been so wonderful. Dave, did you want to do an inv- invitation? Okay. Um, and and so David's going to before we do lead us in t- invitation or even during this invitation, if you just want to come down and just tell how much you appreciate. Uh, what they mean to us here within the church. And so if God has spoken to your heart in some way, uh, we just want to give you an opportunity to come uh, to the altar, and especially if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. There's so much love within this church and, the, and so many good examples in this church. Uh, you are without excuses. We talked about this morning if you don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know him. And so so this is just a, a time if you'd like to come and pray at the altar as a Christian to do that. And if you're lost, uh, won't you come? You've heard testimonies tonight how Jesus has changed even these young lives and he wants to change your life as well and so as we sing I want you to come if you need to I love you Lord and I live
stepping out and so just continue as we continue to play just uh, feel free to come and like I said just encourage our kids like uh, David said they got so much temptation that we don't even know about this uh, as, as adults and so that uh, that they live that life they be a generation that God brings revival back to this nation that we live in and so so come and encourage them tonight <laughs> 